Hello everyone, welcome back to Anonymous World. So previously I have made a video on Linux fundamentals, which you can watch here on the top right link. So in today's today's video I will cover Linux fundamentals with the help of a try hack me platform. Basically by giving live examples, we will do a walkthrough of Linux fundamentals series on try hack me. So let's get started. so this is linux fundamentals part one so try me has a three part series of linux fundamentals by doing which you can learn a lot about linux commands and get hands on with it so today we will be seeing walkthrough of linux fundamentals part one so in task one we have the introduction part it's just an introduction you just need to read it uh, in the part one you will see running your very first command in an interactive Linux machine, teaching some essential commands used to interact with file system, and it will introduce you how users and group works on Linux. Okay, so let's get started. Do a bit of background on Linux. So it's just a history of Linux, how it was created, why it is used. Flavors of Linux. Uh, it's just basically history about uh, Linux. So we will directly go to first question. Mm. It's a research question. What year was the first release of Linux operating system? So you can just Google it simply. 1991, I guess. Yes, it's 1991. Okay, let's move to interacting with your Linux machine. So, um, this room has inbuilt Linux machine, which is browser based. So, you don't need to open your virtual machine. However, you can do it in on your virtual machine by connecting with OpenVPN. So what we will do, we will click on start machine. So, it will start the machine. Once deployed, a card will appear at the top or bottom. So we will get our IP address in 50 seconds. So just so now we just need to wait. Access desktop in 98 seconds. So within 100 seconds, we will get our machine. Okay, so I have deployed my first Linux machine completed. Let's move to task 4, running your first view commands. Okay, till then our machine is loading, we would give a short read. As we previously discussed, a large second point of using such as Ubuntu is lightweight they can be. So the terminal of Kali Linux is purely text based. So some commands are given here first command is echo the work of echo is to output any text that we provide later uh, i will show you how it works then second is who am i it tells you what user we are currently logged in as so here is some snapshots are given for example here it's given echo hello friend so in output it prints hello friend so echo is you can say it likes a print command and second screenshot it's given who am i so if you run who am i it gives you ubuntu as you are logged in as ubuntu so next task is to try this on our linux machine okay so we will wait a bit more eight seconds Okay, so our machine is open now. So it's our Linux terminal. So let's see uh, who am I command. Who am I? As we enter who am I, it uh, put try hack me. So we are logged in as try hack me here. Oh, 
let's see first question if we wanted to output the text try hack me what would our command be so uh, we just saw in the description we use echo command to print something so we will type echo then within double inverted comma just write try hack me okay so you can see we got output as try hack me so answer echo try hack me Okay, second what is the username of who you are logged in as you are not deployed Linux machine so we just saw OMI tells us about the user which we have logged in so it's try hack me okay moving on to next task interacting with file system okay so we have covered echo and who am i commands so now let's see some file system commands ls it is used for listing what files are um, present or directories are present uh, cd used for changing the directory cat is for concatenate or we can use it to read the uh, content of the files pwd is stands for present working directory so it will print the working directory which you are currently in okay so we will see these firstly let's clear our terminal here so let's move on to our first question on linux machine that you deploy how many folders are there so for listing the folders or files we use ls command ls so there are one, two, three, four folders, and access.log is not a folder, it's a file. So there are four folders. Okay. Which directory contains a file? So you can you should check it manually. Let's see. You can check it like this ls. Then suppose you want to check folder one. So see ls folder one. There's nothing. Ls folder two. Sorry, ls folder 2, there's nothing, ls folder 3, there's nothing, ls folder 4. So there is a file in folder 4 which is note.txt, so answer is folder 4. Now there is a command ls hyphen al. Uh, it tells you uh, how many hidden files are also there uh, which are which starts from dot uh, dot bash dot logout dot bash rc these are hidden files present in our di uh, present working directory it also tells you about file permissions suppose r stands for read w stands for write and x stands for execute we will see these later on what is the content of this file so we saw note.txt was present in folder 4 that's clear so now we will cd to folder 4 cd folder 4 ls there is note.txt now to read contents of this file we use command cat cat note.txt so the content is hello world exclamation so we got our another answer use this uh, now next question use the cd command to navigate to this file and find out the new current working directory what is the path so the for present working directory we use pwd which prints the work present working directory so the whole path is home try hack me folder 4 home try hack me okay so now let's move to next task which is searching for files so it uh, teach about two commands which is find and another one is grab find command is used to find uh, uh, where is a particular file or 
even a particular directory is located so its syntax is find hyphen name then you give the name of the file which you want to search or the folder or even you can specify the path where you want to find the find something so here is one command find hyphen name asterisk.txt so what this asterisk will do it will list all the files uh, whose ending is with .txt extension along with its path so in example it shows find hyphen name start.txt so it gives all the txt file password.txt to do.txt everything so now the next command is grep grep is used to uh, find a particular word or a pattern in a given file or in a given file so later we will see use grep on access.log to find the flag that has prefix of thm what is the flag okay so first we will go back to uh, previous directory we can do go by doing cd space dot dot so okay we came back so now we want to find prefix of thm in access.log so first we will try to read this log simply cat dot log so as you can see it's a hell it's like a hell it's much big all mixed here and there so finding a particular word in manually it's nearly about impossible so what we will do uh, we can do cat access dot log then we will give a pipe sign then grep then we will write our uh, word we want to find so here we want to find thm so we will write thm and then enter so here you can see it's get it gets highlighted get thm access okay so answer is thm access And I still haven't found what I am looking for. Just don't know what is. We'll complete it. So now next task: an introduction to shell operators. Okay. So it tells about four operators: ampersand, double ampersand, greater than, and double greater than. You can. So ampersand operator allows to run commands in background of the terminal. Double ampersand allows us to combine multiple commands. So we can use more than one command uh, using double ampersand. Let's try. Okay, uh, first we will see uh, later commands. The operator, uh, the next operator is uh, we can take the output from command and direct it elsewhere. It basically works like adding something to another file. Okay, I will show you in the task. So let's see a uh, double ampersand ls double ampersand who am I? So as you can see, first it gave uh, output of ls, then it gave output of who am I? So like this we can run two commands at the same time using double ampersand there are more ways to do this okay so let's see our first command first task if you want to run a command in the background what operator would we want to use so its answer is person we just saw that now next question I wanted to replace the contents of a file named passwords with the word password123 what would my command be so let's suppose we have a file named passwords that is the command which is used to make a new file we will see that later on the next part second or third so let's just ignore it for now and there is something given in this passwords file let's say it's written in password okay so now we will cat password 
so you can see uh, hello is written in password so the question says we need to replace it password one two three so what really is our command so we will do echo password one two three then single greater than then our file name passwords okay again we will read our passwords file so you can see hello is replaced by password one two three so this echo password one two three greater than passwords is our required command one two three and passwords so the next now if i wanted to add try hack me to this file name password but also keep that so uh, we saw that the single greater than replaces the whatever content is uh, previously written in the file so now we don't want to replace it uh, rather we want to append it or we want to add it so what we will do in the question we want to try hack me so we will write echo try hack me then instead of single we will use double greater than operator then file name passwords now we will cat so you can see password one two three and try hack me is uh, has get appended so the answer will be echo try hack me passwords okay now use the deployed in a machine to put this into practice so you have if you're not subscribed you have one hour so you can practice anything you want or you can use your own virtual machine next is conclusions and summaries so you can read it on your own so we covered the following understanding why linux is commonplace interacting with first ever linux machine some fundamental commands introduction to navigating around file system how we can edit append replace okay i will have a, will have a play around done task 9 linux fundamental part 2 so you can terminate the machine from here and then you can move on to linux fundamentals part 2 and you can just click on complete so that's all for this video i will save in next video with topic linux fundamentals part 2